Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Hello, darlings. Welcome back to Sobcast the Podcast. As you may already know, this podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, but we will be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and the housing market. <sighs> you know what? Maybe I don't even want to talk about it. We're going to be talking about grown up things, okay? As scary as they are. A little while ago, a friend told me a story about a friend of a friend who had another friend. Let's call these two friends uh, Mary Kate and Ashley. Just remember, they're not—they're not related. They're not the twins. They—these are completely different people. One is named Mary Kate. One is named Ashley. Completely separate. Did not share a womb that we know of. They're the kind of friends that have known each other for years and years. They graduated college together. They've had the same group of friends for years. Everybody has, you know, settled down, gotten married, thrown each other all those parties that we've been talking about, shower this, shower that. And it's uh, that time in the group where some people were deciding to maybe have babies. So while this is happening, Mary Kate is like, Actually, we're not ready for a baby. We're, uh, my husband and I are going to get a dog. And we're really excited about it. We actually, we already have a name picked out for the dog. And it's Breton. Ashley's like, what the fuck, Ashley? No, (laughs) wait, sorry. Then Ashley's like, what the fuck, Mary-Kate? Breton is my baby name. That's what I'm naming my kid when I have one. And Mary-Kate's like, oh my gosh, are you pregnant? And Ashley's like, no. And I don't know when I will be. And Ashley's like, oh man, I'm getting my my people mixed up. Then Mary-Kate, Mary-Kate's the one getting the dog, is like, well, you never told me. You never mentioned that Breton is your baby name, like... It's also just my dog. Like, you could still name your baby Breton if you want, I guess. And Ashley was like, I don't know. This might be like the end of our friendship. You really, I feel like you don't get it. I feel really misunderstood. And I really feel like that name should be mine because I'm having a human child someday, maybe. And Breton means something to me. It just really does. It really speaks to me. I have no other options. Breton. The two remained friends, even though maybe uh, not not as strong as in the past. Mary Kate got her dog. His name is Breton. And about two years later, Ashley had a baby and named the baby Breton. My first question was... How does everyone handle this? Do we call the dog Breton the dog? Breton 1? Is the baby Breton Jr.? Is anyone just Brett? Is anyone just Tun? I have so many questions. Also, like, why that name specifically? But then, I did... (laughs) I did look up um, names similar to Breton... You know, because I was kind of trying to, like, put myself in Ashley's brain. Like, if she's like, this has been the baby name I've always known I've wanted. I don't know any other options. Uh, Maybe I'll just Google it. But And these are the ones that came up. Um, Branton. Shelby with an I-E. Barnabay. Not Barnaby. Barnabay. Fernando. I'm so sorry if your name is Fernando and I'm laughing at your name. I just, I find it interesting that it's not Fernando. You know, I feel like that's kind of a classic one. But uh, here's some other ones. Um, Damonus. 
<laughs> or maybe that's Damanus. Erasmus. Starletta. And Dimitri. Anyway, I kind of don't get the same um, vibe from those names. And I'm... I mean, I'm sure there are a lot more resources other than nameberry.com, which is where I am. Oh, but since my friend told me this story about her friend's friends, Mary-Kate and Ashley, I feel like more and more people in my life have come out of the woodwork with stories very similar, like eerily similar to this one, specifically about someone stealing their baby name. I had a friend, she will remain anonymous, who had a sister-in-law use the name that she had always been hoping to use. Like, what do you say at that point? I had another friend who had a close person to them having a baby and they had a little list of names they were going to use and one of the names was my friend's secret baby name and she was like i when my friend asked me about these this list of names i kind of just want to shit all over my secret baby name so she doesn't name her baby that which is understandable (laughs) i think but she would rather have done that shit on the baby's name in an effort to make sure her friend doesn't use the name um Rather than just saying, that is the name I would like to use. There's something that these friends who have told me about this have in common, which is that when either there's a risk of their secret baby name being used or whether the baby name has been used and it's kind of out of their hands at this point, and that is that it kind of sends them into a bit of an existential crisis. Hmm. Okay. A part of that, I think, is that my friends who have these names picked out aren't even 100% sure that they want a baby or that they can have a baby. And I think it uproots all of these fears, all of these, well, that's what I should want. And we'll get to that later. We'll, we'll get more into that. Before we move on, I mean, I obviously have to uh, acknowledge the Sex and the City episode because I also have been wondering, like, did we all see the episode of Sex and the City where Charlotte finds out that their old friend uh, or like their estranged friend was using her secret baby name, like, Shayla and she was really distraught because you know her love life is in shambles and she'd always wanted like a family and uh she like goes to her what is it she has like a weird like old-fashioned chest and she opens the, the treasure chest and there's a pillow with the name Shayla like embroidered on it very interesting So, I mean, one of my big questions is, did we all see that episode of Sex and the City on TBS when we were, like, 15? And it, like, I don't know, warmed its way into our subconsciouses that we needed to have that secret baby name be almost part of our identity and our hopes of dream, hopes and dreams, Huh? I don't know. (laughs) I feel like I might be able to uh, um, find the root cause of so many of our big life questions um, in episodes of Sex and the City. What do you think? There's a stereotype, kind of a, a trope in movies and definitely in TV shows, I'm sure, and a lot of the sitcoms we watched as kids where young girls and young women 
were planning their wedding way before they even had a boyfriend or found someone that they wanted to marry. And at that time, at least I'll speak from my own experience because I know everyone's life has been so different, so I don't want to put anyone in any in any boxes. <laughs> no way, we're not putting anyone in any boxes. Um, looking at my parents and even their parents, the kind of formula for a happy life that I was picking up was you do school and then you meet someone in your early 20s and then you get married and then you have kids and that is how you have a life. So, are we still doing that? Are we still feeling that way? Does each of us in the back of our mind have almost like a scrapbook of what we thought our wedding dress was going to look like and what we think our babies are going to be named? Huh? (laughs) I want to read you some very depressing statistics. In 1980, which, you know, was when, not when my parents met, but around the time when I was but a twinkle in my parents' eyes, The median U.S. household income was $21,000, which in 2021 monies would be $71,457. Okay. Okay. And in 2018, the median U.S. household income was $64,324. Oh, so... Things that were possible for people setting up their lives in 1980 looked a lot different than it does for us now. And that's, uh, that's hard to wrap my head around. This, this, this next statistic is you should be sitting down. I hope you're sitting down. In 1980, the median U.S. home was worth 47 thousand dollars which is a hundred and sixty thousand five hundred dollars in 2021 monies and in 2021 the median u.s home sells for four hundred and eight and eight oh my god i swear i can read four hundred and eight thousand eight hundred dollars so people made more in 1980 and the houses cost less and now the houses cost like four times more and our household income is less and this is reflected in people's decisions for instance in 1987 the average man and woman had their first marriage i like that I like that specificity in that had their first marriage at around 25 and now men and women have their first marriage at around 29. Um, Cool, 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 cool. Great. Oh my gosh. Am I having an existential crisis while I'm recording this? I might be. I might be. I think this is the straight A student in me wanting to succeed in every way that I possibly can, but having this almost to-do list of uh, get married, have kids, have a house, and sometimes even the order of the things, I'm like, okay, marriage, house, kids. I don't 
even believe in that. And I don't think it's the secret to happiness for everyone. I'm sure for a lot of people it is. And like, kudos to you, especially if you pull it off because damn, wow, mortgage and diaper. Wow. Amazing. But I have to wonder, but I have to wonder if having these, I'm just going to relate it all to the secret baby name. Like if everyone kind of has their secret baby name or like their secret wedding dress or like their secret like dream house, I think a lot of people have a secret dream house too. Is it good for our mental health because it's like a little corner of our brain that we can escape and hope for and dream about? Do we really use it for motivation? Like, are we like somehow driven by the idea of a nice little house right near LACMA in Los Angeles that has those uh, domed windows that I love in a small yard which is somebody's dream house I don't know (laughs) is that driving us or is it contributing to the fact that a lot of us feel like we're constantly failing (laughs) and constantly behind in life I'm gonna let you think about that for one second while I read you this um this little lullaby this little ad You ready? Do you struggle with your mental health and feel like you have difficulty managing your emotions? (laughs) Wow, that's straight to my heart. Um, yes. Dive Through has partnered with mental health professionals to create interactive courses, including the free course Self Regulating Your Emotions. So feel like so you can feel like you have the tools to live a mentally healthier and more fulfilling life. Download the Dive Through app for free on the App Store or Google Play. Was that calming? Should I whisper it next time? That was me reading an ad. Okay, so let's get back to baby names. Ooh. I was in a relationship once uh, when I was really young and um, it was kind of wild that we were talking about like getting married or just having a future together at all because it just wasn't, that's not what this is about. Anyway, we picked out like baby names for our future kids and... There was this feeling of accomplishing something, something very grown up about it. Like, I must be on the right track in some way. Like, if I'm capable of picking out a name, maybe I'm capable of taking care of someone else. Maybe. I'm 22. (laughs) I can do anything. Here's what's coming up for me right now. Somehow, there is a pressure, a pressure to accomplish literally everything. And I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if it's my overactive imagination. I don't know if it's my overthinking. But I really understand why someone using the baby name you thought you were going to use in your little dream life would bring up a lot because we see it every day right I go on oh man I went on Facebook for like two minutes the other day and all of it was like hello you went to high school with me and now I am buying my second home okay or like um I recently saw a couple girls who who were all pregnant now and I just was like, I used to hold back your hair when you would vomit from drinking. 
and now you have a baby that's that's so interesting I feel like now I should there is that a pressure talking about these secret baby names with my friends was a good reminder to um of a concept that I have a very hard time with, but I think has been getting easier as I get older. As, as I get older and more fabulous, which is that just because someone else has something doesn't mean you can't have it. Like, there's infinite happiness. There's unlimited happiness and goodness in the world. And so if your friend has a kid named Breton... <laughs> Doesn't mean you can't name your dog Breton. Like, there can be infinite Bretons. Oh, this is such a, like, Breton. Bretonthony. It's such a random name to be fighting over. Like, Brett. I would understand a little more, but Breton. Breton. No offense. I, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to hurt someone's feelings named Breton. I think it's a beautiful name. It's gorgeous. It's French actually. But, um, but, um, but that mindset that I think I've heard it called like the abundance mindset that there is unlimited goodness in the world that is at everyone's disposal. And actually like, the more other people have good things in their lives, the more um, accessible they might become to you as well. So it just opens up all of these opportunities. I mean, the other option is to feel really jealous of people, I think. And to take it really personally if they steal your baby name. Because they probably didn't do it on purpose. Actually, I was looking up the top 10 baby names of 2020. The top, well, I'll tell you some of my favorites. Liam, Olivia, Ava, Charlotte, William, James, Benjamin, Henry, Alexander, Amelia, Isabella, Evelyn, Harper, Sophia, all of these children are going to be like in preschool with these like old monarch names, <laughs> which is cute. Maybe they'll grow into them. I guess it must be a lot of pressure to name a kid anyway. Like my parents almost named me Jennifer, but then obviously they came to their senses the minute I appeared into in the world i'm very much a christina and um actually the reason christina might have been even on their minds is because in 1985 it was like the 12th most popular girl's name in the united states these days it's um the 621st most popular name in the united states (laughs) that's fine though (laughs) I want to know, do we have secret baby names because we secretly want babies? And because deep down, we all want this kind of cookie cutter life of very traditional this, 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 the the marriage and the house and the babies. Because nowhere in that... trajectory is like become a CEO or start your own business or even like travel to Africa or read 50 books in a summer or something like that. I remember, so I went to Catholic school and In second grade, you study to get your first communion, um, which is where 
you are eight and you dress up like a small bride and then you go up to a priest and he gives you a small cracker and some wine that is supposed to be the blood and, and body of Jesus. And that's just like normal. That's a normal thing. And you study for it for like a year because you have to like, I don't know, I guess have a certain amount of knowledge about the church, what they want. And I remember getting this piece of paper that had all of the sacraments of Catholicism on it. The sacraments are like First Communion is a sacrament. Baptism is a sacrament you've probably heard of. (laughs) That you've probably heard of. It's very popular. (laughs) Um, They consider marriage a sacrament. And the way that these... Catholic traditions were laid out was in a timeline. So first was baptism, then reconciliation, and then first communion, and then confirmation when you're like 13. And then it it branched off two ways. And it was either um, live a life of service, which was I mean, it was implied that that was, like, become a priest or a nun. I'm sure it was more nuanced than that, but I was eight, so. I was eight and probably, you know, I just had some wine, so who knows. (laughs) Then the other branch was um, marriage and divorce. No, just kidding. (laughs) It was marriage. And then all of, uh, then those two branches reconverged at the rites of death, which is where a priest comes and blesses you. No, they're not called the rites of death. I just made that up. It's called like your last rites. It doesn't matter. At the end of your life, you get blessed by a priest. Again, kind of like how you were baptized when you were a baby. And if you do all of these things, then you get to go to heaven. That was what was implied. Doing each of these steps was how you lived a full life as a Catholic person. Now, I can't become a priest. Um, They don't let girls do that in the Catholic Church yet. Knock on wood. So I saw myself in the other branch of, of very heteronormative getting married and then you know getting blessed by a priest as I'm dying (laughs) on my deathbed (laughs) surrounded by my children and grandchildren this might be an example of therapizing myself but of course that affected me and if you experienced things like that in your childhood whether no matter what gender you are however you identify, I think we all had that stuff pushed on us at some point. And maybe it would help to examine that before people in your life start stealing your secret baby names by accident. Now for the big confession. (laughs) The big reveal I have a secret baby name. I realized it. I never told that guy I was planning on apparently um, carrying, bearing his children, apparently. Um, But uh, I have been hearing about this, like, mythical member of my family for, like, my whole life who was this really cool woman. She... um, had to take over her husband's ranch in California because he had a stroke really young and she was like the only woman in the area who wore pants and she would have these like crazy adventures and one of my like, I don't know, great cousins, if that's a thing, um, found her diary in a car and burned it because she was so offended by what she found. (laughs) Oh my god, I wish I could have been friends with her. 
and her name was Evangeline. How pretty is that? How pretty is that name? And when I first heard it, I was like, okay, do I want to be Evangeline or do I want to name my kid Evangeline? <laughs> because I think actually I want to be Evangeline. <laughs> but when you have these uh, boxes that you're trying to tick in your brain, whether or not you're conscious of it, I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to name my kid. And I'll, name, I'll call her Eva. So cute. Aww. I think this is one of those episodes that definitely should have just been a therapy session. <laughs> I haven't found a new therapist, you guys. <laughs> oh, I would apologize, but I'm not sorry. I really hope this starts a conversation about how we think about our future. Because... I have to wonder how it has affected our decision making. Like, what have we settled for because we thought we just needed that thing? Or how many times have we, like, beat ourselves up because we haven't done something that maybe wouldn't even fit into our lives? Like, all my friends who... My friend in particular who was telling me about Mary-Kate Ashley. <laughs> She told me that she was so confused because she had a secret baby name. She sure did. And she knew for a fact, and she'd known for a while that she didn't want kids. But that in her mind, there was still maybe this timeline where it it happened. Not that it would happen, but that it had happened almost. Like a parallel universe where everything was different and there were kids there that were hers. And that is an interesting thing to evaluate about your own life. Like, well, what would my life be if I hadn't moved to Los Angeles? What if I was still living where I grew up? Who would I be? What would, what, what is she doing? <laughs> is she okay? <laughs> that version of myself. Because also, it can be so hard to remember that you have control. And you get to make your own choices. Like, if you have a secret baby name and... You are feeling like, oh my god, if someone takes this baby name and it, this baby name represents my dreams of actually starting a family, then start telling people you want to start a family. Um, maybe look if you're not in a relationship or if you're in a relationship where you don't think co-parenting would work out, look into other options. Look at the little inspiration board in the back of your mind where you have pictures of your dream wedding dress and your dream engagement ring and your dream house and some secret baby names and think about why they're there and ask yourself why you want them to be in your real life. At one point, I thought, wow, I, I don't, like, technically want a wedding. I just like the idea of wearing, like, a sparkly ring and getting dressed up and having all my family together and, um, like, publicly proclaiming my love to someone. And then I was like, oh, now I'm like, oh, that's a fucking wedding. <laughs> Ah, we talk ourselves we talk ourselves in and out of things that we want, huh? Because sometimes they just feel impossible and we're trying to make our life fit instead of finding ways to make those things fit into our life. Does that make sense? I'm going to stop recording this episode now because because I need to talk to someone about this.
please, please tell me your thoughts. I want to know, did you have a secret baby name? When you had a baby, did you even use it? Where did your idea for a secret baby name even come from? Did you see that episode of Sex and the City on TBS when you were 15? Hmm? And then later, did you finally get like the DVD set and watch the unedited episodes and, and you were like, oh, I really was Sex and the City, huh? Wow. TBS did a lot of, uh, took a lot of artistic <laughs> liberties with that show. Uh, we're all going to figure it out. We have no choice. I love you so much and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.